And the same day when even was come, he said to them, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent him away, he took them even as in the ship. And there was arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship. It was now full and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? He arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said, unto them, why are you fearful? How is that ye have no faith? And he feared exceedingly, said once another, what manner of man is this, that the winds and the seas obey him? Father, we thank you real quick. We appreciate you for everything you're doing. Pull your weight around this room. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, tell them one more time. The storm is over. The storm is over. It's over. One of the things prophetically the Lord began to speak to me as I, I'm, I'm almost done really, I, we, we, we've been here a while, but the Lord began to speak to me as I was driving down here, and he says, because you're coming to prophetic shark tank, I want you to look at this symbolically. The ship is your, your business. The ship, in this case, is your business. The ship is your business. And so, every business goes through a season of storm. Every business also goes through a season of transition. And it's most times in transition where the storm rises. 
because it is the storm's assignment to dismantle you in the midst of transition. In 2023, even your life as a business has been through major transition Be because you're trying to get somewhere, but things have happened in your life to prevent you from getting where you're trying to get to. And so the reason why I say this is because when you understand that there's nothing wrong with your business or your idea, then you will stop trying to jump ship and rather the transitional space. Because many of you jump ship from a space that's supposed to transport you to a place. And if you leave your transportation, you drown and you commit suicide to your destiny. And so one of the things the Lord began to speak to me as I was on, on the way down here, if I give you an idea to bless you, the storm does not dictate rather what I gave you is going to bless you or not. Storms only come to test you, to test you and to literally cause you to become stronger in a place of faith. It's all about faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. So if you don't have no faith, you ain't got no business. Oh, y'all quiet. I'm, you know, I'm serious. If you don't have no faith, you can't have no business. Without faith, you cannot accomplish anything. So the way faith gets built is by rat weathering through storms. So I'm going to give you a couple of tools, and I'm almost done because I want to be very intact. I know y'all can't hear me hooping and hollering, but I want to give you three. One of the things that we lack <laughs> is the exposure of Jesus in our business. And we don't use him really as a help the way we should. And also we don't, under, we don't recognize how influential he is in our business. And so one of the things... Anytime God speaks a word to you, it is something that is a declarative statement. A declarative statement is something that is going to happen regardless. The first word he gave to them was let us go to the other side. So what you have to understand is that when God gives you a declarative statement, that is something that is going to happen, that has really already happened. You're just waiting for time to align each other. And so what I'm saying to you tonight is your destination is secure. You just have to make it through transition. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm almost done. Tell somebody, my destination is secure. I just have to make it through transition. In transition, in order to get a, in order to get a response, you have to be desperate enough because in this particular text, if you look at the scripture, the, the storm arose and they begin to automatically panic. Now, I want to I want to before I get there, I want to say this. What was crazy to me, Apostle, Apostle, is that Jesus was in the bottom of the ship asleep and there was a storm that was happening. They were on the top of the ship. Now, G at the bottom of the ship, you're going to feel the most, right? But he remained asleep. They were on the top of the ship. They saw the most, but they didn't feel the most. So my thing is, it, why are you panicking if Jesus ain't panicking? <laughs> when have you seen God panic about transition? And so you have to be so invested 
in what he said about you that you don't allow a storm to cause you to panic about what you know God gave you as a vehicle to an established destination. Tell somebody, I can't, I can't afford to panic. Because panicking causes you anxiety. And it will cause you to commit suicide to your own destiny. If you do not understand that if your God isn't panicking, then why are you panicking? Okay? Number one, don't panic. I don't care where, what your, where your business is or where your life is. Tell somebody, I can't afford to panic. Then, because you are a kingdom, you have the deliverance already on your ship. When you understand that kingdom businesses and people that are a part of the kingdom already have deliverance to, to uh, tumultuous situations, then you understand that if I have it on my ship, I need to utilize what's on my ship to get me through this. Okay, okay, okay. Because see, the main thing when we get in, we don't understand this kingdom business. The first person first thing you should do is get in prayer about your business. The first thing we do, we go to complaining. We go to anxiety. Oh, God, you gave me this to drown. You brought me out here to drown. I'm going under. You declare all this stuff, and the word about you is still constant. <laughs> you declare all this stuff, and the word about you is still constant. God never changed his word about you. But when you get in a storm, your profession about him changes and about what he gave you. And so what God is saying, if my word doesn't change about you, then you don't need to change about me. Believe that if I'm on your ship, I am able to help you through transition. Tell somebody tonight, all we got to do is wake up Jesus. Oh, <laughs> look at somebody and say, hey, wake him up, wake him up, wake him up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He is on your ship. Some of you are in the midst of transition right now. But God came tonight and sent a word to you tonight and say, we just going to wake up Jesus. Because if you begin to wake up Jesus, he, he gets up with the authority to control whatever is causing you to spin out of control. Tell somebody we're going to wake him up tonight. So what wakes him up is desperation. Because desperation shows how much you want what you want. So they say, Master, carest thou not that we perish? God, do you care about what's happening with me? Do you care what's going on? Do you see What's happening here? What is your language saying? Is your language complaining or is your language confronting? Anytime you are having an issue or a storm in your kingdom business, you need to go and confront your God. Your language needs to be confrontational. Oh, come on here. Because some reason why you ain't seeing that because you're saying the wrong thing. You're so busy complaining and you really need to be confronting God. Lord, do you care? You got me out here in the middle of this. Do you care? And because he cares, he moves. Tell somebody, because God cares, he's getting ready to move for me before the end of the year. Okay, okay. Your enthusiasm overwhelms me. I said, because he cares, I said, the Lord said he's going to move before you before the end of the year. That's your response? And so the Bible says, watch this. This is how you know nothing's wrong with your business. You ready? Y'all walk with me prophetically? The Bible says he speaks to the wind. 
and he, the Bible says he rebukes the wind. He says nothing to the ship. He speaks to the wind, and he speaks what's holding up the ship. Because the wind was causing the waters to move. But he says nothing to the ship. Why are you downing your ship when there's nothing wrong with your ship? It's just something that's wrong with what's holding up the ship and what's causing the disturbance. So he rebukes the disturbance. Because the water had an assignment to get the ship to the other side. But whatever disturbed the water was the wind. So he speaks to the disturbance and then he tells the water, now you be still. Okay. So what is God saying to me tonight for about five praises? The Lord said, I'm getting ready to rebuke what disturbed your transition. <laughs> oh, I wish I had somebody in here. I said, whatever that has caused a disturbance to your transition has just been rebuked by your God. I remember when the, my, my, the old saints used to get up in service. They, didn't, they used to just say, I rebuke you. They used to say, Satan, the Lord God. Come on, I wish I, I came to run a demon off your business. I came to run a demon out of your life. I understand y'all had deliverance this morning. It's one more deliverance in this room. God's going to rebuke whatever that has disturbed your transition. I wish I had somebody in this room to open up your mouth and say, Satan, the Lord God rebukes you. Oh, I feel the glory in here. I said, look at somebody and say, Satan, the Lord God rebukes you. He rebukes you off of my stuff. He rebukes you off of my plan. He rebukes you off of my ministry. Come on, if you know your God got power, you ought to give God praise because it's a difference when the Lord rebukes Satan on your behalf. And I feel for about 50 praises that God's getting ready to rebuke Satan. Whatever there has been a disturbance, whatever there has been a disruption, has just been rebuked by your God. If it's poverty, consider it rebuked. If it's sickness, consider it rebuked. If it's under the shoulder, if it's depression, consider it rebuked. Whatever it is, it has just been rebuked by your God. Throw your head back and praise him because I feel a devil on the run. I feel an enemy on the run. I feel God evacuated the enemy. Come on and shout in here and say, Satan, the Lord God rebukes you. I'm done. So, watch this. I'm done saying, and this is where I'm going to pray. Watch this. Pastor Rosemary, this is what, now, because I'm educated, punctuation is important when you're looking at the Bible. So he says, he rebukes the wind, calm, and he says, peace, be still. He is never saying peace to the wind. He's talking to the ship. When he didn't just say peace, he said peace, be still which means peace exists in seconds over your head. I said, he said when he spoke to the Lord, which means that for the rest of this transition, there ain't going to be nothing else. Because some of us been having moment peace. But what God is getting ready to do for you while God transitioning you to your place of destination, you're just not going to have peace for a moment, but peace going to come and exist and stay. Oh, I ain't going to hear nobody. Can I prophesy to you that your 2024, you're going to have peace all year long? Come on. That there will be nothing that interrupts your transition because peace is coming into your life and it's going to remain. Oh, I wish I had somebody because 
because when God rebukes something, it can just be rebuked for the moment, but he rebukes it forever. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God said you're going to have peace and it's going to remain. Tell somebody my peace going to remain. My peace going to remain in my house, in my job, in my business, in my ministry. Come on, my peace shall remain. Somebody throw your head back and give God praise for a peaceful year. A peaceful year, Apostle. A peaceful year. The hindrance has been rebuked. God has reversed the enemy off your track. And you shall have peace all, all, year, all year long. All year long. All year long. All year long there shall be. What if I told you God just sent a cease and desist letter to your enemy? and say, you can't touch him this year. You can't bother him this year because I have declared a peace that will stay. You can't touch him this year because I have declared a season of peace that will... year. We have been through the storm. We're finished. And it would behoove them to get to work. Because if God gave me a year with no warfare, you couldn't stop me from building. You couldn't stop my business from moving. Baby, prepare to be sick of me. Because if he gave me a year with no warfare, oh, y'all. See, you got to catch that thing, y'all. Y'all want to speak in tongues and have warfare all year. The devil is a liar. Lord, lock the witch up. Lock the accuser up. Free me of them. I'm tired of fighting. I need peace. And I promise you I'll be I promise you I'll do everything you call me to. Go after everything. I'll build what you say. I'll make it to where I'm going. Somebody give a praise because I feel a peaceful year. See, I see them be get ready for a peaceful year. God, God is sending a spiritual cease and desist letter. There's some people that just going to say, I got to go. I'm sorry. I don't know. I, Apostle, I don't mean no harm. But just know God is ushering some peace into your life. All of us shunder. I rebuke the disturbance. You're going to exit yourself because the Lord is rebuking you. Somebody give him praise. If you hang on, no, 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 this ministry, for this gathering, that not only will we shift to it, thank you, but there'll be a, a cease of warfare. Everybody stand, lift your hands, because this is going to mean something to you. You're not going to know what to do when you have no warfare. I hear some goodness shouting. You ought to get a plan and tell God how much you're going to build, because I'm telling you. How much you're going to do. How much you're going to expand. Your peace is coming. He didn't just call peace, he told peace. That's a powerful God to tell peace to come and stay.
January, be ready to blow your mind. Hey! And God said, watch this. I think Apostle said, thought I was crazy. We was on the Zoom. I said, I need you to go. I said, I need you to get some black towels. This is the Lord showed me. He said, in the spirit realm, he is giving us spiritual black cards. And if you know anything about a black card, that means unlimited credit. You got, you about to have unlimited credit with God. Oh, I wish I had. And you going to make up for every season of deficit you experience it. This is your sign that God's getting ready to do something for you. For a dimensional. Oh, somebody say, get in my heart. Somebody giving praise in this room. I said somebody giving praise in this room. Oh, I release it. Come on. I release it. Come on. I release it, come on, quick. I release it, come on. This. Now let me ask you a question. If God gave you unlimited credit with him, that beats unlimited credit with man. Because the difference between a black card with God and a black card with man, you ain't got to pay God back. And what the Lord's getting ready to do for you, I heard the Lord say he's getting, I don't know what happened in 2014 or what transpired between that point and now, but the Lord said, I'm getting ready to make up for you from that year to now. I'm getting ready to cause a major resurgence to hit your life. He is giving you. The Lord said to tell you, you have favor on your life that he has given you. You just don't use it. And God said you are holding yourself up because you refuse to branch out in the favor he is giving you. But God said this is a sign that he's mantling you with a four-dimensional favor. And you're getting ready. And at the top of the year, there's going to be four opportunities that get ready to open up for you and your household and your seed. Hey, how about shot? How about seed? Come on. Somebody give him praise. Come on. Wait of the Lord. Him how about shot? Wait of God. Woo. Scream in this room. Come on, scream.
to break addiction because the same thing he did for you he gonna do for them hey! somebody give him praise somebody give him praise I'm, I just want to I want to bless this family I bless you in Jesus name can I pray for you you came up, come stand behind side, side your mother. No, yeah, yeah, individual. Because this is her vision, but God is also giving you a vision. And as because you are muted to help her, you're gonna be a young entrepreneur yourself. I see it all over you. God's gonna give you, it's gonna be so impactful. Restore seven years of things you lost. So that's why I tie, you had to tie those around your hands because you, you're not just coming into a one dimensional blessing. This double get ready to hit your life. But so let me tell you something. You lift your hands. Allow, you, allow God to continue to sober you. And, allow, and I want you to allow, it's good to be zealous. Zealousness will take you so far, but wisdom will keep you. You better hear me. Because the enemy wants to cause a strong storm to hit your life that will stagnate your life. But the Spirit of the Lord says tonight he cuts that thing off. And the plan of the Lord will be in full effect in your life. You're a, pro you a prophetess, but you birth prophets. Thank God, thank you. Shout out, my God. And the sting, even the sting that's in your heart, you you try to be strong about it, but there's some there's a sting in your heart that God's gonna heal. And 
God's going to use you. Hey! to the shop they say money come to me now in Jesus name oh, in the name of Jesus we decree and declare we decree and declare we decree and declare three phone cord can't easily be broken we decree and declare well favor hey in Jesus name in Jesus name Jesus' name. Every generation of curse of poverty be broken in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout in this room. Yes, Lord. The struggle is over. The storm is over. The storm is over. I said the storm passing over hallelujah come on say the storm it's passing over hallelujah hallelujah somebody give him praise in this what you That's in you. And I command in the name of Jesus to be on to be unlocked in the name of Jesus. And I don't know why I'm saying this, but you're beautiful. And the enemy, I decree every against every negative and false word that has came against your mind. People have sent things, negative words, glory to God. But the spirit of the Lord says he dismantled those negative words because you are getting ready to come into a season of divine advancement. Peaceful. 
Listen, Apostle Rosemary, the Lord says, I'm getting ready to immobilize you again. The Lord says, get ready for, for heavy travel. He says, because he's allowed, he's, I'm just literally seeing, I don't know, like, it's like you got this almost like daily routine. I'm looking at like this daily routine thing. And I heard the Lord say, okay, I've let you do that. I see even like see you fixing up stuff that don't even need to be fixed up <laughs> in your house, like adjusting pillows on this sofa. I see. The Lord says, "I've let you do this, but I need to immobilize you because you're going to be a king. You're going to be a major kingdom weapon in this next shift." And the reason why He has to use you because He says, He says, because you've been built for it tough, you're not afraid. And he said, I need someone that's afraid that will speak truth to power and truth to systems and unlock. Because you know how to unlock. And it's like, well, you know, if people just, I just see you saying, if people just come to me, I can help them. You know, I'll be in my own little thing. You know, if people just come to me, I don't mind. I love everybody. But God says, I'm going to send you to them. Because there are people who need you to come pull them out. And because I know you've been built for it tough, I can trust you. Because one thing about a Ford, if you keep revering that gas, it'll pull a bolt out of the mud. And that's what the Lord said. He said, I'm going to use you to pull people out of the mud this year. Once again, I'm going to mobilize you. I see you traveling. I see you in planes. I see you, you, you. I even see you in setting like this, teaching seminars and different things. And it's not so much about the money. God says, this is about the, the other side of fulfillment that you've been looking for. Because you've been asking, you're saying, well, Lord, I want to be, I want to, even though, you know, I'm chilling, I want to make sure I'm totally obedient to you. He says, now this is totally obedience to me. He said, let me immobilize you and weaponize you for this hour. Because you are the one that I can trust. I even see like there will be a season where the Lord's going to cause you even to, I don't know what, even what you do like in politics, but I even see the Lord lead, moving you in the politic ground. And even see, I see like meetings in Washington. I see, I see these things and I see God weapon and immobilizing you and moving you in these spaces to open up spaces for those who would never have a chance because they may not have the dialect to speak truth to power but I have made you so intelligent and you have the dialect to go in and use it to open up spaces and open up ways and he said I'm going he said can I use you once again can I use you once again it's bigger than Jacksonville it's bigger than Florida it's bigger than Georgia I'm literally seeing a, a strong demand on you. And the Lord says, I'm going to give your house peace about this. When he begins to say, put this, put this out. Because it's like, almost I'm looking like, like this branding or something concept that you got hidden like in this file on a computer or something. I'm looking at something like, a, but I'm looking at you being pulled this and you redoing some things and, and putting this thing out and I'm seeing it catch like wildfire because you know what to say and how to market to to ever for you to feel mm -hmm. a space but God says you're going to put a little you know jazz on it you're going to pull it off this thing you're going to fix it. it's going to be a little jazz on it but it's for the now because of the deficit that the world is going to go through he's going to cause you to make sure the kingdom sees no deficit Father, I am on Siki on the Lamosha. I thank you for this new strength that's gonna come upon her. And I thank you, God, for not so much a restoring of passion, but I thank you, God, that you've given her a time and space. Because it's not gonna be for a very, very long time. But I see a certain amount of time and space and grace for you to function in. And this is gonna fulfill that space of fulfillment. And you're going to see 
God do what he showed you. I'm even almost going like about 20 years ago. God said, God said it's bigger than that. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hands and say it's bigger than that. 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 And you shall see greater works done through your hands in Jesus' name. I thank you. You call me young because they're strong. So God, I ask you right now to release a grace of strength to her in the name of Jesus. It's already done in Jesus' name. strategies for surplus in the name of the Lord Jesus and it is so in Jesus name you may be watching my line you could not get here but we're moving into a prophetic realm a four dimensional realm he's going to give you back everything you can read Joel 2 God says in the first month if you can make it to January come in ministry via online, you're going to sow that seed of 124. You're going to sow the seed of 224. God may have called you to sow 1,024. But whatever level of giving you're going to give, you're going to sow that seed and you're going to believe that 2024 will be your year of divine restoration. You're going to believe that 2024 is going to be the year that God catapults you and give you peace. 23 literally means by the number system calamity that's why you've seen so much calamity this year but 24 means heaven works overtime Do you know? heaven works overtime for you so if you experience calamity this year now y'all ain't gotta be honest but this been one heck of a year but 2024, heaven gonna go to work on your behalf. Tell somebody, heaven is gonna respond. In Jesus' name. There may be some of you in this room. I wasn't here. And I know this is a this is a seat to everywhere I go. I said, I said, I never miss an opportunity to so. You know why? Because I don't just sow because people tell me I sow and there's an anointing. Because you reap from the offering. You got it? Did y'all bring your towel? Yeah. Okay. You want credit in heaven? You just be so. Come on, come on, baby. <laughs> I for, your mama said, you want credit? I'm sorry. Father, I thank you. In Jesus' name. Because she don't know how to get up. <laughs> we got to go. 
listen to me tonight, the Spirit of the Lord, I sow into an anointing. I remember when I was almost homeless this year. That's how I can go at your story. I went to service and the enemy got in my ear. He said, are you crazy? You gonna give and you might have to stay in a hotel? I said, well, who told y'all I was going to stay in a hotel? This is the devil talking to me. So I was going to stay with my sister. I wasn't staying in the hotel. That's how I, and the Lord said, give. I gave a seed. And in the midst of unfavorable market, my seed opened up a door that caused the owner to say, I'll finance you. Woo! That clap sounds jealous, but God will do the same thing for you. You know that a uh, say they'll finance you, it's finance because I look 25, but I'm 31. That'll finance me for a $250,000 house, and he gonna over own a finance. I released that in this. Oh, I released that. Apostle Rosemary, my car began to get trouble. I drove a Mercedes. And they told me it was going to be about $12,000. I said, God, I just spent $9,000 on the engine earlier this year. I can't keep spending money. I don't have $12,000 to spend on this. I said, I need you to do something. I, I went and preached revival with a bad engine. Because I said, well, you know, I'm going to still do God's work. Got down there, met a woman. She said, I can help you. Long story short, she was she she helped me legally and i only i think i had to put maybe a thousand or two thousand dollars down now that's a cry from 12. but guess what never had to leave my home they came and dropped me off a hybrid bmw somebody when you faithful to God he'll be faithful because I'm a seed sower I'm a seed sower last thing I was preaching on revival and they called me during revival and they said your mom is in the hospital unresponsive she had just left dialysis they had took too much off of her she faded in dialysis and they wasn't able to revive her. and I kept preaching and, I, and, I, and I, so, I said, Lord, I need you to remember the seed I sowed. And when I said that to the Lord, I had sowed a seed of a thousand dollars. And I said that to the Lord, literally within 48 hours, she was out of the hospital. But my faith and my seed did it. Because sometimes you ain't going to get money back. But you will get things money came by. I'm saying this because I know the anointing that's on my life is the anointing of surplus. I have, I was telling Apostle Juan, um, I have one company that I worked, for, that I was a profit for, made over fifteen million dollars because of the because of partnering with the prophet. You don't just sow just to be sowing. You got to sow until an anointing. And this ministry is an anointed ministry. And it is a billion dollar ministry. How many of you going to shout? I said it's a billion. I said GICMP is a billion dollar ministry. And we believe that 2024 is going to be the birthing of that. We've seen millions. Most of y'all, you count all the money you spend, you see millions too. A million dollars ain't no money no more. But in this season, God is shifting you into it. I prophesied to every woman. God said 2024, he showed me there will be women that will come into billionaire and millionaire status. Tell somebody, I am there. I am there. Men, don't get jealous. They're going to bless you. I need some of y'all. There's some of you that are going to sow tonight with that 124 that 224 and I want you if you're going to sow into that realm I just want you to come that 
124 and at 224. I want you to move by faith tonight as quick as possible. I'm going to release a grace upon you that's going to change your life forever. And I'm telling you, tonight, this is the type of anointing that causes things to happen overnight. God is going to do it for some of you on a Sunday. Tell somebody, miracle coming to my house on a Sunday. I need at least one more person that's going to stand with Apostle and Monica and say, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bona fide soul. When you a bona fide soul, I just, I'm a bona fide soul. Tell somebody, I'm a bona fide soul. Apostle Lana, there's some property that's going to open up for you in your region. And God's going to mark the price down for you. The Lord says when he does this, don't, 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 don't be slow for what your feet. God said move in faith because faith is going to be waiting on you. Because I literally see God even showing your face to a Caucasian man that's going to bless you. And you're going to be able to do multiple things with this property. The Lord says to tell you, you don't have, you don't have, you're not going to have to plow so hard because I'm going to send you your type of people. And I know you want to leave, but God's, but God is saying, if, if I let you leave right now, you're going to forfeit what I told you I was going to do in that region. And he's not going to allow you to make him be a liar for nobody. So he's going to give you strength. He's going to give you strategy. But this thing is going to be unlocked. And I'm telling you, if you get a strength and a strategy and a plan, even I even see, I don't know if this means, but I heard the Lord say to tell you, he's even opening up something like in the foster care system in the foster care with children and different things. God's getting ready to open up something in that area. And I see you being very instrumental in that area and it's going to cause major grants and major things to be released. God says to tell you your workload is getting ready to get easier but your bank account is getting ready to expand. And Lord says I'm going to give you the first three months to really cut off the leeches this time. Because it's not that you haven't seen harvest. You've had people that latch hold to you to drown out your harvest. But God says, what I give you this time, you're only going to be able to share with worthy people that's going to be able to sow back into you so you can keep it and it will be sustained. Where you are now is okay. You ain't even satisfied. But there's a... Ooh! Everybody say this, 2024. God's going to satisfy me. Hey! So I release it upon you in Jesus' name. As I'm touching your hand, it is an agreement between you and the Lord. Everything that's been prophesied over you today is already immobile in your life. In Jesus' name. Y'all, I know y'all together. Y'all, y'all together. Hold each other hand. Father, I thank you for immobilization. I thank you for 2024 will be the year. God, yeah, 2024. Not another year. You said it's going to be a year. Father, I thank you that it is their year. And I thank you for contracts. I thank you for deeds. Thank you, glory God, that you're going to put them in the right spaces, for the right connections. The Lord said you're getting ready to take a trip. It's going to be like a workcation, but it's going to be a lot of connections that's going to be made. It's going to be very influential. And God says, he's going to, you got, God says this is the season that he's going to send connections to your life, that you, but you got to do the follow-up. And the following one up is going to sh show them how desperate you are, and it's going to release contracts and the things you need. I see residual things getting ready to be released in your life. God say follow up and watch 
overflow hit your house. And I heard the Lord say, I never heard him say this, but he said, overflow will hit your house and it's going to remain in Jesus. Father, I thank you. There's a ministry here. And it's not for the now because there's a movie that's going to come. But the next three to five years, if you be obedient, there is a pastoral grace that's going to come upon you. Because the Spirit of the Lord says, what I'm going to do in you is even going to shift the dynamic of your family. And the Lord said, I'm going to send salvation. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Salvation in your family through you. I see your family even coming in being your members. Those who are not in church, I see them saying, well, I'll trust you guys. And they are going to get saved. But he's going to mature you. He's going to grow you up. He's going to open the word to you. And because there is a pastoral grace that's going to fall upon your life because he can trust us. I, that don't even sound right, prophet. You. Because he's going to turn your mind into his vehicle and his transportation for his word. And you're going to see God use you. And you will be known for healing says you will be known for major healings says this you'll be known for some of your you'll be known for teeth you'll be known for teaching but you'll be known for miracles <laughs> I release the grace to teach God's word. I release the grace to write. Now open your ears tonight to hear the revelation. Somebody give a praise. same thing that God is going to use and birth out of you. You are apostolic in nature. That's why you have multiple, it's like, because let me tell you something about apostles. And this is no, this, apostles need prophets. The reason why, because prophets sometimes it's like a sobering thing between both gifts. Prophets, sober apostles, and apostles, sober prophets. Which means that apostles are natural builders. So sometimes it takes a prophet to say, you need to stay here just a little while longer because apostles get bored quickly. Because it's like, why are you not building? Why is this not done? I'm, I'm ready to go on to something else. I got too much vision. And that's why... What look, no, for real, what looks a mess is really not a mess for an apostle. It's, it's building. But it takes a prophet to give the time stamp. I'm teaching, buddy. January, come join the class, GICMP. It takes a prophet to give a time stamp. And then, how apostles sober prophets is they give us stability. It gives us stability. It gives us a safe haven. And so you're really an apostolic prophet. But it's trying to learn the levels. Really, you're apostolic and God's going to put the prophetic in your son. And you're going to, and it's going to sober you both. And you're going to build out this legacy, prophetic and apostolically. Because that's what drew you to this gift. And that's God say what I'm on. You ain't seen it yet, but you're going to see it this year. And what I hear the Lord say is to tell you, Apostle, can you come touch your hand? Touch your hand. 
touch her. He says, it's not that she's giving you a mantle, but she's, um, she's opening up your mantle tonight. And your seed just unlock your mantle for your whole house. to it for me at 40 cents because God is doing something in the fours and I want the four in your seed because four means door now watch this you ready there's a door that you love that God is getting ready to close because the season for you in that particular space has expired but there's a great door that God is opening even as I'm speaking. You, you are about to, now watch this. I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna go through. You're gonna go through a morning season because it's something, it's something you love, you love it. But it's a greater, it's like almost what I'm seeing in the spirit is like, Apostle, you know, if you ever seen that scripture, like when Jesus is like, give me a, it's like, give me a teddy bear, but he have a bigger teddy bear behind his back. That's what God is saying in this season. But the season of mourning is going to be hurtful because it's something that you love, but you're going to be able to close it. But God is getting ready to open this major door for you. That's, I'm talking about this door, Apostle Rosemary, what I see is, one check from this door is going to be able to write a whole year for you. You've been getting checks that could probably, you know, a month. And sometimes some, some don't even, it's just a fun something. I'm looking at some, But the Lord said, get ready for one year checks. Because that, woo! I am looking, I don't know what. There is about to be a divine partnership for you. We're getting ready to, don't be sad, but you, we're not gonna be able to look at you for a while. You know why? Because I'm seeing like a partnership with like cruise. I'm, I just saw like Carnival Cruise right now, but I don't necessarily, I don't really like Carnival, but what, but what I'm seeing is it's like, the God is showing me that because that's the only thing that came to my mind because he symbol, he'll symbolize something this shape. I see like this partnership like with cruise lines that is literally, I'm talking about one year checks that are coming to you. And the Lord says, he's also with this other type of business, you're going to be able to, God's getting ready to set you up in such a favorable way that you're going to be able to employ. I release the grace of the CEO upon you even the more. And I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that these partnerships with these cruise lines and other entities are getting ready to literally rush you down, says the Spirit because you're the one. Matter of fact, I'm about to get so technical. This should, this great door should have been happening, but there was somebody that talked negatively against you, that got into the ear of a person, of people, of and said things like, "I see like joking and laughing and trying to play you down," but the spirit of the Lord says to tell you they don't know what they did. Because it just caused your name to even ring no more. And I'm not going to give that space no rest until the door opens. Father, I thank you that it's open to her. Get ready to prophesy on the road.
by the fifth month and the fourth day of next year, God is going to total, you're going to be totally, totally, I heard the Lord say, tell her she's going to be totally stabilized. She said it's 10 days before her birthday. Now, y'all know I don't know.
Because God's getting ready to cause you to find more purpose in life. Because the devil's been trying to fight you in that area of purpose. But because there's a lot of a lot of things that you personally just feel unfulfilled. But God says he's getting ready to fulfill you next year and give you purpose and give you dreams and give you vision and give you more, says the Lord. I open up this business. I even open up trucking to you. God do it. Because I saw like a blue and a red truck. <laughs> Jesus name give it to him Lord yeah somebody say give it to him Lord says, but the Lord says, I got a plan to make up an overflow. 
I'm only going to honor what you deserve. So the yes is going to be for the thing you really deserve. Three. Three. Yeah, three bedrooms. Come on. Two and a half bedrooms. Come on. Yeah. 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 In that neighborhood. Yeah. Hey! I'm about to shout. In life, storms may come our way, and sometimes they leave us feeling broken, betrayed, and alone. If you're a divorced Christian, you know the pain of a shattered dream, the sting of betrayal. But we're here to tell you, your story doesn't end with the echoes of a closing chapter. Divorce is not the end, it's a new beginning. And as a Christian, you have a resilience within you, a strength that goes beyond the trials of today. Dear friend, we understand the tears you've shed, the questions that linger in your heart, but we're here to remind you of a powerful truth, the God of second chances, the God who turns broken pieces into beautiful masterpieces. 
You are not alone in this journey. There's a community of survivors, warriors who have walked the same path and emerged stronger. It's time to lift your eyes from the ashes of yesterday and embrace the dawn of a new tomorrow. To the betrayed, the weary, the ones tempted to throw in the towel, don't. You are more than your past. Your worth is not determined by the scars on your heart, but by the boundless love your Creator has for you. In the midst of the storm, find refuge in prayer. The Bible tells us, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Psalm 34, 18 Let His words be a balm to your wounded soul. Today is not the end of your story. It's a turning point. Embrace the healing journey, for there is life after betrayal, joy after pain, and love after loss. Dear friend, don't give up on the beautiful life waiting for you. You are loved, you are valued, and your story is far from over. Together, let's rise from the ashes and discover the strength that lies within. Your second chance begins now. Connect with us if you need help moving forward. Discover recovery and self-love. Your story matters. Children in the